Dangerous Jane, written by Suzanne Slade, illustrated by Alice Rattery. Jane was born beside a sparkling creek on an Illinois prairie in a friendly town called Cedarville. Her mother died when she was only two, much too young to understand why mama never came back, but old enough to know deep sadness and pain. Then a disease made Jane's back crooked, her toys won't point in, she felt like the ugly duckling in her storybook, different, unwanted, hopeless. Jane had few friends, but she always had her father. The two read piles of books together, went on long walks, and enjoyed trips into town to see their favorite sights. One day, Jane and her father passed through the poor side of town, filled with new sights she'd never seen. Small, run-down shacks, sad, hungry parents, cold, barefoot children. Jane's heart ached, a strong, familiar ache. She knew how it felt to be sad, rejected, without hope. Jane wanted to help those families, but their problems were too big for a small girl to fix. So Jane promised herself, when she grew up, she would buy a big house to share with people in need. The years passed quickly, time for Jane to leave home, get married, and start a family. That's what women were supposed to do. But Jane had plans for her own, college and a career helping others. She studied hard, graduated at the top of her class and set off to learn about the world. Jane saw statues in Italy, operas in France and castles in Ireland. But in England, she saw something quite different. Starving people spending their last pennies on rotten vegetables. Jane felt that familiar ache in her heart. Poverty seemed to be everywhere. How could she help? Then she heard about Toneby Hall, a settlement house in London that helped poor people help themselves by providing skills, confidence, dignity, a new start in life. So Jane visited that house where guests learned to read and write, discovered art and history, attended concerts and classes, and it gave her an idea. Determined to keep her long ago promise to help struggling families, Jane set sail for home, dreaming of her own settlement house, where immigrants who worked two long days at backbreaking jobs for next to nothing pay could find help. Jane searched Chicago and found a big brick building in the perfect place, near families in desperate need. But the old house was far from perfect. Broken windows, peeling paint, crooked doors. Undaunted, Jane traveled all over town, asking wealthy women for donations to turn this broken down building into a home, a settlement called Hull House. In 1889, Jane swung the front doors wide open. Everyone was welcome, anytime. Working 18 hours a day, she provided whatever her neighbors needed, English lessons, childcare, wash tubs, steady work, but most important, she gave friendship, dignity, hope. Families fought to Jane's big house. Immigrants from Italy, Greece, Russia, Ireland, Germany, Poland, and more. Sometimes they argued about beliefs and ideas. So Jane asked them to listen carefully, respect one another, and peacefully settle their differences. And everyone at Whole House got along fine. It seemed everybody loved Jane at Hull House in Chicago, across the country. Neighbors called her Miss Kindheart. Newspapers named her St. Jane. President Roosevelt wrote her a letter of sincere thanks. The New York Evening Post even wanted Jane to run for president. But while Jane was talking peace, Europe was talking war. Countries argued over land, money, and power. They built weapons and trained armies. On July 28, 1914, Jane read the horrible news. World War I had begun. Within days, more nations joined in to help their friends, to defend their land, to protect their citizens. Many soldiers died in the brutal battles. Families were forced from their villages. More people than ever were homeless, starving. Jane's caring heart ached like never before. She ached for the world. For 25 years, she'd helped people from different countries live in peace at Hull House. But what could Jane do to stop a war? 
Jane knew exactly what to do. She brought women across America together to form the Women's Peace Party and find a way to end the war. Overseas, women heard about Jane. They longed for peace too, so they organized a gathering in the Netherlands. The International Congress of Women needed a brave leader. They needed Jane. Jane, Jane joined 1,500 women from 12 countries, all determined to work together for peace. The women debated for days, searching for bold new ways to stop the war. They created 20 resolutions, ideas for peace, to share with world leaders. Newspapers called their plan silly. Women cooked, cleaned, and cared for children. What could women say to presidents and prime ministers? Jane knew what to say. War weary, road weary, she crisscrossed 14 countries. She shared her peace resolutions with the British Prime Minister, the French Foreign Minister, the Austrian Prime Minister, and even the Pope. Jane understood war was complicated, but she believed each idea, each visit, each smile and handshake made another small step toward peace. She penned hundreds of letters, led peace conferences, and pleaded with warring nations to talk to each other, and more importantly, to listen. After four bloody years, the war ended in 1918. Finally, peace. No time to rest. Jane packed her bags again, sailed across that ocean again. Her tired heart was breaking far, far away neighbors in war-torn countries. She visited children in hospitals and fed starving families. Back home, some people didn't like who Jane helped, strangers in other countries, or how Jane helped them, giving away precious food. Dark lies swirled around her like an angry tornado. Some said Jane was a traitor. Did she care more about former enemies in faraway countries than her own neighbors next door? Jane received nasty letters from people around the country, people she'd never even met. When she gave speeches, the crowds that once loved her booed her off the stage. Then, the FBI named Jane the most dangerous woman in America. What would Jane do now? Jane kept doing what she'd always done. Helping people. No matter where they were from, no matter what others thought, no matter what the cost, year after year after year, But something changed in 1931. Dangerous Jane was given a new name, Nobel Laureate. Jane Addams was the first American woman to win the Nobel Peace Prize. Jane had never paid much attention to what others said or the names people called her. She just kept right on working for world peace, for people in need for the rest of her life. Nothing could be worse than the fear that one had given up too soon and had left one effort unexpended, which might have saved the world, Jane Addams.